where the Riverside County has their areas. The natural disaster due to winds, the fires, like we have a lot of, we've had a lot of fires, I noticed it's a lot more than we usually had, especially with our water shortages. Today's supposed to be 105, so today, to say it like it happens now, do you have something in the car, do you have water, and supplies ready in the car? You know, if, the, if it starts to be fire season, you have to make sure you have water and supplies with you in the car at all times. There's tornadoes, mudslides, earthquakes, we haven't had anything yet, not on wood. The man-made uh, man disasters, uh, train, train accidents, car accidents, the anthrax issue, and 9-11. Okay. Assemble that kit. Now, when we're, your kit is not going to look anything like my kit. I mean, there could be similar things. I'm going to have, um, you know, some Neosporin maybe. I'm going to have some scissors. Um, I'm going to have some band-aids. I'm going to have masks, um, gloves, safety goggles. Um, they, we put in gloves like this. Anybody know why we would have gloves like this? Something falls down, you need protection for your hands to keep yourself from cutting yourself. Um, another thing that I really want to encourage you to do is have a wrench tied to the main line to your home. So the gas line. Because if your house, if you're in an earthquake, it's breaking up, it's, it starts a fire, you need to turn off the gas to your home. Okay? And the gas is turned off by a wrench, with a wrench. So take your wrench, get a, buy a good wrench, and tie it to your main line. And many of you are thinking, I don't even know where the main line is. That's what we're telling you to do today, prepare. Where to go, what to do. Um, if you, say your children are here at CSDR, and there's a major earthquake, and the freeway collapses, freeway 10 or 6 classes. Where do your children go? What are they going to do? You can't get to them. They can't get to you. What is your plan? The school will have a plan here, but I don't know about the public schools and whatnot. So you need to develop that plan, and guess what? Include the people that you're putting on the piece of paper, because I could write a really good plan, like if my, my uh, line here was cut off, the school here, I can't get to my daughter who's on the opposite side of town, and I decide my daughter's going to go with my mother who's closest to that area because I'm across town over here. I, I need to inform my mother, oh mom, by the way, you're on the emergency contact list, so if something happens to me, they're going to be calling you. One thing I want to stress, um, and it's for your safety as well as your child's safety. When your child goes to school, and I don't know if any of you have children or grandchildren or nieces and nephews, but your child goes off to school, and we have taught them you don't go, you don't get the car with anybody who's a stranger, you don't do any of that. I want you today to develop a code for your child. And that code is something that is kept between you and your child and the people who are allowed to pick them up at any point in time. And then you teach your child to ask, what is the code? They don't say the code, they never do it. They just say, what is the code? If that person can't answer with the right code, your child does not go home with that person. I don't care if it's a man dressed in a police uniform. If he does not know the code, the child does not go. And that's something I want to stress because there's too many kids that willingly go with people that are in authority that we have been taught to respect and, and trust. So this is just one more level of, of uh, care that you're going to give to your, you and peace of mind for you and your child. The earthquake, drop, cover, and hold. Now, the drop, cover, and hold, we used to do it as drop, cover, and, or, or stop, drop, and cover, right? We put our hands over our head, and we'd all be down on the ground. Well, in an earthquake, what really happens? Everything moves. So, now they've developed a plan. It's 
a good idea to drop, cover, and grab onto the leg of the item that's covering you. Hold on to it or grab it somehow so it keeps you protected. Because as it moves, you need to move as well. Okay, so practice that with everyone in your home. The emergency kit, we, they used to say a two to three day supply. Now we're encouraging to seven to 14 days minimum. Because if there is a major earthquake and the roads are down, they aren't going to be able to get to you for a longer period of time. So it's up to you to empower yourselves and to help each other have at least 14 days worth of supplies. And that means a lot of water. So if you have to count up the number of people in your home, you want to make sure that you have enough water to, for them to drink, to cook with, and not necessarily shower with, but in order to at least wipe off and feel a little bit better, okay? But the major thing is the amount of water it takes for each person to drink every single day. Remember, we're 95% made of water, so we need to keep replenishing ourselves. So figure out how many people you have in your home, figure out the three gallons of water, the five gallons of water that you're gonna need for each one of them every single day for 14 days. And then figure out where you're gonna keep it and find it. Emergency supplies can consist of anything that you need for your home. Your home is different than I am. I am not a preschool taker. I'm not diabetic. I do not need diabetic medica medication or the, um, the needles or whatnot. You might be. You might have asthma. You might need asthma medication. You're going to need a prescription. You're going to need to have things on hand at home for that. You have your own medical needs that are different than my needs. I don't wear a hearing aid. Some of you might wear a hearing aid. You're going to need to include in your emergency kit hearing aid batteries, but then they need to be replaced on a regular basis. So we want you to, uh, every three to six months, go through and take out and replenish the, the batteries and things that could go bad in your flashlight, in your radio. A lot of the wind-up radios that you see nowadays um, are becoming very popular because all you do is wind them. You don't need a battery anymore, but you need to make sure they work. Okay, food. They have these little, um, like army food, they have the, the whole meals in a package like this that you can buy. And all you need to do is purchase these. You can purchase them in different places. They have them ready to go. So go ahead and pick up some of those. They actually taste pretty good. Um, I've never tasted one myself, but my co, um, I had uh, classes with several guys that were in the military and they brought them and gave them out. And they actually have everything in the kit from a match that you can start it to cook it to have a hot meal um, all the way to um, whatever you need the flint in to drink it too. Mm -hmm. So everything is in these little packages that look like they're nothing, but it increases into an entire meal for, for everyone. 